Hello everyone, my name is Nuvala and welcome to another video. Today we're building a farm in one of the most dangerous places of Minecraft, in a piglin bastion. Because we're making a frog light farm. It's actually a very simple farm to build, but it's in a very challenging spot. The farm we're going to make should work on both Java and Bedrock Edition. And we're going to need a lot of materials to make sure that this is a safe space. Without further ado, let me show you how to build this. First of all, you're gonna need to find a piglin bastion. And you wanna find a very specific one, namely a treasure room. It's recognizable by the lava lakes in between the two buildings underneath the bridge. Make your way into the build and do note that there are piglin brutes all around you. So you might wanna get rid of those before start building the farm. Once you've made your way inside, you will notice just how big this space really is. You want to make your way all the way down to the bottom, just above the lava lake down here, where there's a huge treasure for you to be found. And I don't mean these gold blocks and the precious loot inside of the chest, but I actually mean the monster spawner right there. This is a magma cube spawner. Frogs actually really like magma cubes for dinner. So we are gonna make use of that mechanic to get a bunch of frog lights. First, as mentioned, get rid of the piglin brutes and take the treasure. After that you want to delete this platform and make the entire floor level with the lava. Now because this is such a challenging build, I want to give you a little bit more than just a frog light farm. I actually want to give you this entire bastion for you to build a base in. To prepare the bastion for a new base, you want to make sure that it's safe. And the first thing to do is create a way in and out without having to deal with the piglins and piglin brutes, if they are still around, all around this building. So first of all, create a nether portal. Hop on through and see where it gets you in the overworld. Okay. That's a very interesting spot. Uh, well, just for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna delete this. And let me see if there's any treasure. Well, not really. Okay, so what you wanna do is you want to note the targeted block and mainly the X and Z coordinate. Because you want to break this portal, you wanna make your way up to the surface and place a new nether portal on the exact same coordinates, light it up and get back into the bastion. We now have a safe way in and out of the piglin bastion. The next thing we are going to do is fill in the entire lava floor with black stained glass blocks. You also want to place glass blocks in place of these black stone blocks here as well because those are still spawnable spaces for mobs and we want to make sure that this entire floor is spawn proofed. Now while you are building this, you will get a lot of magma cubes around you which pack a punch, so you might want to get rid of those. Let me show you a way on how to disable this spawner in order for you to build the farm without having to deal with all of these magma cubes. You want to build a grid of 7x7 seven seven blocks with full blocks on each of the ends and glass blocks in between. I'm using nether blocks, but you can use any type of solid block you like. It should look like this. It needs to be placed right on top of the spawner. And if you build it like this, it will prevent magma cube spawning for the entire time that it's there. Now get rid of those last remaining magma cubes by either destroying them yourself or, like I do, summon an iron golem and let him do it for you. While the iron golem is killing off the remaining magma cubes, we are actually going to make our way all the way to the top of the building because what we want to do next is get rid of all of these 
broken down bridges, you want to clear out the entire center and have a clear view down from the bottom all the way to the top. After that, you will have a spawn proof floor and a free space all the way up to the ceiling of the bastion. Next you want to count up at least 24 blocks from the bottom and from that level you want to fill in all of the walls using black stained glass paints. This will make sure that every single mob that is behind these glass walls will not be able to see you when you're operating the farm in the center court. Now you can do this all the way to the top of course, it will take you a bit more materials than it already does, but doing this till at least the 24th level Make sure that every mob that does see you falls down all the way to the bottom and dies due to fall damage. This is a very tedious process and will take quite some time, but trust me it's worth it because it gives you an entire bastion for you to build a base in. Now that the entire bastion is ours, we can finally start building the frog light farm. We're gonna start by figuring out in which space magma cubes can actually spawn. This is a 9x9 nine nine box around the spawner. That means if you build down to the floor and then build out 4 blocks in each direction, you will have the bounding box of the magma cube spawner. This is going to be the size of our farm. Now because I want this room to seamlessly fit inside this bastion, I'm using different types of blackstone blocks to mark out this area. But you can of course use any block you like. You will notice however, that if you filled in the floor using glass blocks, that the area is kind of floating. And I don't really like this view. So what I'm doing is I'm deleting some of the glass blocks and build into the lava so that it looks as a solid area and that it's actually part of the bastion. Next up is you want to make sure that the magma cubes that do spawn are all spawned inside of this box. So you want to build up these walls quite a bit. And completely in style of the bastion, you can make these walls different heights to make it look as if it's broken down a little bit. Vary the type of blackstone blocks you're using to give a bunch more texture to it and make sure that it really blends into the surrounding area. On top of each of these pillars you can place a stair or a slab to make sure that no mobs spawn on top of this and to give it a little bit more detail as well. Now to make it look even more worn down and to be able to take a look inside you can replace some of these blocks by black stained glass panes. We are now going to prepare the area for the magma cubes to spawn. First we want to get rid of the lava in the floor. Because we need to build a collection system underneath the farm to collect all of the frog lights. Once you've made your way down one level. I want you to go down another level because this will provide enough space for the magma cubes to spawn more regularly than when you build the entire system a couple levels higher. So you want to build downwards until you have 6 blocks free underneath the spawner.
On this level, you want to create a rail system using some redstone blocks, regular rails and powered rails. When you're standing in front of the farm, you want to start these tracks in the back corner on the left side. Now place down the entire rail system and you should end up in the front right corner of the spawning area. Next up, you can fill in the floor using blackstone blocks right on top of the rail system. And that's the first part of your collection system. Now outside of the farm, you want to create a little bit of an area to work with, about six blocks long and three blocks wide. You want to place a chest right here with a hopper facing into it. You want to place a comparator behind the hopper just like this. With a full block behind it and a redstone torch attached to that. On top of this redstone torch you can place another block. And you can place a repeater in front of it. This repeater should light up. Now if you put a block in front of that one and then place a powered rail on top of the hopper, you will notice that the powered rail is powered on right now. When you put a hopper minecart on top of it, it should enter the rail system underneath the spawning room. However, you want to make sure that it is able to enter the space underneath the spawning platform. So you might want to delete this block. And as you can see right here, a slab in this case is also not suitable, so just leave this open. You can fill in the rest using some full blocks or some glass blocks if you like. Now when the minecart returns, it is sent out immediately again. But when the minecart has items in it, it will stop because the hopper underneath receives a signal of the comparator, which sends a signal to the back turning off the redstone torch and turning off the redstone repeater. This turns off the powered rail, meaning that the minecart will stop. As soon as the minecart is empty again, the hopper is empty and the comparator turns off, turning on the system again, sending out the minecart. This is an automatic unloading station and you can use this in pretty much any farm you like. Now that the auto unloading system is done, your collection system is all set up, you can get your frogs in. Do remember that there are three types of frogs, a cold, a temperate and a warm frog. If you want to get all three variants of frog lights, you will need a frog of each type. Now the magma cube spawner will spawn small magma cubes, but also very big ones. The frogs are only able to eat the little ones, so we want to break up the big ones by placing down powdered snow, one level higher than the floor on which the frogs are. This powdered snow will freeze and kill the big magma cubes, breaking them down into smaller ones. The smaller ones will get eaten by the frogs, which automatically drops a frog light, which is then transported to the chest by the hopper minecart. After you've placed down the powdered snow, your farm is actually ready to go. So you can delete the grid on top of the spawner, which prevents magma cubes from spawning. Now 
after just a couple of seconds you will notice that frog lights are piling up in your storage right away and well that's pretty much it all we are going to do now is decorate it a little bit because i like to keep this as vanilla as possible and make it blend into the natural surroundings as best as we can the first thing we are going to do is connect the spawner to the rest of the bastion by placing down a black stone wall with a chain and another wall on top of it on top of the spawner place a full block on top of that a stair facing towards the wall an upside down stair connected to that with a slab on top a full block attached to that then a slab attached to that again with a slab underneath and then connect it to the wall make it look a little bit better by placing down a couple of stairs like this so that it looks a little bit sturdier This is it, this is all you need to do. Now using a little bit more blackstone, we can use it to cover up the automatic unloader. Because let's be honest, this isn't very nice to look at. You can make a double chest out of the collection chest. Make sure that you put upside down stairs on top of it so that you can still open it. Further than that, I'm keeping it very simple. And all I'm basically doing is surrounding this with a wall with slabs on top so that nothing can enter this space. And fill in the entire floor using blocks with glass on top so that it's spawn proofed and the lava doesn't hurt my eyes anymore. You can surround the nether portal using some blackstone as well to integrate it into the building. I'll leave this up to your imagination. And then finally, something that will take you quite a lot of time as well and is completely optional, but I think adds a little bit of extra life to the place, is make a grid out of blackstone slabs somewhere up in the building. From this grid, we are going to hang lanterns made out of frog lights that we already collected, surrounded by trap doors. Once you've made this grid, you can place down blackstone walls hanging from this grid with chains hanging from those blackstone walls these chains can be anything up to four chains to let's say 11 or 12 chains long and vary all throughout this grid from these chains we are going to hang frog lights we are going to surround those frog lights with trap doors in their specific colors so for the ochre frog light, we're going to surround it with bamboo trapdoors. The verdant frog light, we're going to surround with warped trapdoors. And the pearlescent frog lights, we're going to surround using crimson trapdoors. You can place a hopper underneath to give it a more dungeon-like style. What you want to do is hang chains from all of these blackstone walls suspended on the grid on top place down frog lights of the various types at different levels and surround all of these with the trapdoors as i mentioned this will give a very cool effect when you walk into the farm after it's done it's a lot of work but i think it's worth it anyway that's it for me Enjoy your new frog light farm, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment if you have any questions and stick around, consider subscribing. I would love to see your new Piglin Bastion bases in our discord channel, feel free to join that via the link in the description and if you become a YouTube member you will get access to all world downloads of all of my builds. So yeah, have a great day and see you in the next one. Cheers.